2501. And I'm just going to do one final example on the, these eigenvectors from that chapter 6. So in this case, this is a more abstract problem um, in, in some sense. Normally we're working with vectors in R n for various small values of n. Here we're looking now at the space of all differentiable functions. And we have a map T which takes a function, a differentiable function Y, maps it to 1 over X dy dx. I'll leave you to check, there's a little exercise that T is in fact a linear map and I want to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, whatever that quite means, uh, in this particular context for this particular linear map. So remember, to, you have to here go back to the, the, there's no matrices here, you have to go back to the definition of what you mean by an eigenvector. So what you're looking for is you want a y and a lambda such that ty is lambda y. That's the definition of what we mean by an eigenvector. So plugging that in, that says 1 over x dy dx is equal to lambda y. And now, of course, we're back in doing a calculus problem because this is really just a first order separable differential equation of the sort that you solved back in uh, maths 1b in calculus. So we're separating the variables. I'm going to get dy over y, and I take this up, I get lambda x dx, and I'm never quite sure what that means, so before anyone looks, I'm going to put in some integral signs, and now I'm happy. Uh, now that has some meaning, and so I can integrate both sides of this. So I get log y, absolute value if you like, doesn't matter here, and then I'm going to get lambda x squared on 2 plus a constant, and then I'm going to make y the subject of this. So I'll get e to the c times e to the lambda x squared on 2, and I may as well relabel that as a constant a. So that tells me I can find, in fact, for any value of lambda, any real number lambda, then I put y to be this expression, so I take the span, if I want to put this in vector notation, or kind of vector notation, I could write this as the span of this vector, this object in the vector space, and so any real number lambda will do, and once I pin down the lambda, that gives you the corresponding eigenvector or eigenfunction, if you want to call it that. So, for any, for any real number lambda, the eigenspace corresponding to lambda, um, let me write it like this, has basis e to the lambda squared, uh, e to the lambda x squared over 2. And so that'll be the eigenfunction corresponding to the eigenvalue. So a slightly different context um, where we have to go back to the definition of what we meant by eigenvalues, doing it without using matrices. Mm -hmm.